Hello everyone and welcome to the match that just keeps on giving. Uh, it's Young Shishtov Duda versus Magnus Carlsen and this is game 3 of their second match. Uh, now Magnus won the first match uh, uh, without even reaching game 4 so he just won 2 games uh, and, and drew 1 game. And now he needs a, a quiet day basically to wrap things up and win the entire thing. But the first game ended in a draw, or rather the first game uh, Magnus uh, won and uh, pretty much it's, it's over. He won the first match, he won the uh, first game in the second match. Match, but then uh, Duda retaliates in game two. Magnus had a winning position, then he blundered into a drawn position, and then he uh, just blundered even further into a lost position, which allowed Duda back into the match. And now this is game three, uh, the most thrilling game of the uh, of the of the match so far. Maybe not in its longevity, but. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> in its uh, was the opposite of longevity in its brevity. Uh, so <laughs> let's dive straight into it and uh, enjoy, as there is quite a lot to enjoy. So here, uh, Duda opens with e4. We have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now Duda surprises Magnus very early on. So there are many, many good options here. We've seen uh, some of them quite a lot, like bishop c4, bishop b5. We even see the scotch. We even see the three knights, the the, the four knights game. So we see a lot of stuff. But pawn to g3 we do not see very often. This is the Konstantinopolsky variation and uh, it uh, is uh, very, very uh, uh, rarely played. But Magnus has played it himself um, uh, against Levon Aronian and also Yanni Pomnishi uh, has played this uh, uh, G3 move. Uh, so let's see uh, how the game continues. Uh, we have D5. Uh, challenging the the central structure if white allows it why not we have captures uh, queen captures and now knight to c3 much like you would see in a, a scandinavian uh, defense for example queen back to d6 now bishop to g2 and the bishop to g4 so the game continues exactly as the game uh magnus carlsen versus um uh, lebon arunyan from the 2019 london chess classic uh h3 bishop to h5 and here uh, in that game that we mentioned magnus continued with the g4 but here duda doesn't uh, play the move magnus played even uh nepo played this against Aronian. he played the g4 here but duda plays d3 and it is now as of move 8 that we have a completely new game so magnus advances the pawn to f6 he wants to strengthen his center even though an argument could be made for a move like f5 as white is castling kingside and black will uh, feel this uh, later on so here magnus plays f6 we have castles magnus castles queen side we have uh, castles on opposite sides of the board so you know you know what is uh, uh, coming uh, and Duda uh, does not give Magnus uh, even a second to start his expansion on the king side he of course plays the move that is always great and that is pawn to b4 and now when you see this of course if Magnus captures this then Magnus will will pretty much be defending for the rest of the game you know the bishop here controls this beautiful diagonal the rook is coming to b1 it's not going to be easy and best is probably to just play f5 and continue pushing if b4 knight d4 and uh, well it's it's a race uh maybe that's why uh, uh pawn belonged to f5 uh, uh, all along but okay magnus accepts the challenge he plays queen captures on b4 and now the fight is definitely on the knight on c3 is hanging duda defends it and also threatens some very nasty discoveries so magnus plays queen to a5 interestingly there are no nasty discoveries here even though it looks quite unpleasant uh but now a3, knight g to e7, uh, continuing development as Magnus still has a lot of pieces to develop, and rook to e1. Uh, and here, uh, not uh, wanting his bishop here uh, uh, to, to, to just sit, as the, the knight isn't uh, really important here. The bishop defends it, so the queen can move. Uh, Magnus plays bishop to f7, and now there is a problem. Yes, he gains more control over the d5 square, but the bishop here... Uh, is undefended and it seems like a silly thing to say so what if the bishop on f7 is undefended look at uh, all the army uh, around the bishop uh, well that's exactly how chess works here duda plays knight to e4 he opens up a, a discovery to carlson's queen queen to a4 and now comes knight to c5 again attacking the queen queen to b5 and here comes um uh, a moment where the uh, weird positioning of the bishop on f7 could have been exploited. Uh, so I'm not going to show you what happened. Uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute best move for Duda while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this really, really well. 
uh, beautiful line. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Knight captures an E5. Interestingly, it is not what the Duda played, but I will still show it. Uh, the point is, this would not have been possible if the bishop on F7 was defended. But now the bishop on F7 is uh, undefended, we are threatening to capture it and fork both of the rooks. Uh, so what could Magnus play here? Well, he could play F captures on E5. Uh, there's nothing better, but now comes queen g4 check. And after king b8, there's knight captures on b7, completely shattering Carlson's defenses, opening up this diagonal for the light square bishop, and also just rook uh, uh, rook to b1 is coming. There is no uh, no no good move here for, for black. You might capture the knight, and then comes rook e to b1. Black will have to give up the queen. Of course, black did get some material for the queen, so it would be very interesting, uh, but should be... Uh, should be enough for white to win the game. So after queen to b5, Duda doesn't find this. He plays bishop to b4. Uh, or he he uh, uh, solidifies the position. Now uh, he will have some ideas like c4. And now Magnus quickly plays uh, a knight captures on b4. Knight to uh, f5 was also interesting. Uh, but this is a rapid game. You do not have all the time in the world. So knight captures on b4. A captures on b4. And now knight to c6. Adding something in between this bishop and this pawn because you know that if this opens up it's not going to end well and now duda does not play knight captures on e5 like in the variation that we've shown but rather knight to g5 and again uh, how silly is this bishop on f7 but white doesn't even care about the bishop now white just wants this uh, queen to g4 check so here f captures on g5 there's really nothing better otherwise you're just going to lose a whole lot of material Queen to g4 with check, king to b8, and now knight to d7. Uh, here, you don't have knight captures here, but you have knight to d7 check, and now the rook has to be captured. You can't go uh, here because then, of course, you just go under the mask of the queen. And if you go king to a8, we just push c4. Beautiful stuff. Queen captures on b4, and now bishop captures on c6. b captures rook e to b1, and you are not surviving this position. For example, queen to d6, we're going to play queen to d1, and now uh, there's no defending queen a4, queen captures on a7 checkmate. It's just game over. So uh, that would uh, happen if uh, Magnus moved the king. So Magnus gives up the rook here. Queen captures on d7. And now we have bishop captures on b4. You might think, but why bishop captures on b4 if the bishop on f7 is hanging? Well, this bishop is so silly uh, in this game that you, you can't even save it, e even uh, when it's directly attacked. If you move it, let's say bishop to g6, we can just capture on c6. And once b captures on c6 is played, Queen to d8 check, king to b7, uh, and now rook captures on a7. So black's defenses get shattered uh, regardless of what Magnus plays. King captures rook to a1 with check, and now you're getting checkmated. Either you move the king and you get checkmated via queen to a8 or b8, or you block with the queen, but still just queen captures on c7 with check. King has to move now, and now rook captures will be checkmate. So Magnus cannot afford a move to, to save this bishop. He plays bishop captures on b4 first, and now Duda, not rushing with some captures rook e to b1 because his rook on e1 is hanging as well so rook e to b1 uh, and now comes pawn to a5 uh, guarding this bishop here even though that's uh, not gonna work uh, the only way for magnus to continue fighting was knight to d4 offering a queen trade and once duda finally captures this bishop we're gonna play queen to c5 this is how we get away from the b file and we keep an eye on that c3 square so pawn to c3 does not happen and let's say queen captures on g7 the rook will come to f8 the game continues magnus will also have some pressure and uh, it's uh, it's a really uh, a, a wild game. Uh, but instead, Magnus played a5. Uh, he um, uh, miscalculated uh, his his position. And now Duda just goes in for the kill. Bishop captures on c6. What do you play? If you play queen captures on c6, then we're just going to trade. Captures, captures, rook captures on a5. You're going to lose the bishop as well. And that's it. Let's say rook to e8. We're going to play rook captures on b4 with check. And whatever you play, we're going to even trade off the rooks here. Captures, captures, king captures on e8, and that's it. Of course, the end game would be completely winning for Duda. So after B, uh, bishop captures on c6, we have queen to b6 by Magnus, uh, keeping uh, <laughs> himself into the game. But now c3. Now this bishop cannot move as uh, the queen would hang while this bishop is still hanging. So Magnus finally brings the rook into the game, defends the bishop on, uh, on f7, uh, but now c captures on b4. 
uh, we have a4, uh, not allowing the position to open up any further. Uh, but here, Duda just plays queen to e7, attacks the rook, and if the rook moves, also the bishop. And it was in this position, uh, on move 26, that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. So 26 moves against uh, Magnus Carlsen, that is definitely considered a miniature. This was brilliant stuff by Duda, and he completely outplayed him with this weird Konstantinopolsky opening. Uh, so, you know, it might, it might definitely pick up in popularity. Uh, at least in maybe online blitz play but uh, you, you see the, there's a lot of poison to it uh, so here you resign because well let's say once you play queen captures on c6 we're gonna play uh, queen captures on f8 because you are not giving up this bishop you were protecting it for so long you you are not gonna give it up queen to e8 now we just trade captures captures and you keep the bishop uh, but white has two rooks so that doesn't really help you so after queen to e7 magnus of course resigned and the duda really bounces back in the match he's now leading the second match and now he only needs a draw uh, to take things into tie breaks we'll see what happens will magnus maybe win the fourth one and close it all or will do that force tie breaks and then well uh, who knows what will happen we will definitely continue uh, checking it out uh, so yeah that's the game hope you enjoyed it really really impressive stuff against uh, uh world champion magnus carlson uh, i would like to thank B uh, blueberry friends twitter rob rob antonius sharp fade david jarnot and you not to me for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here uh thank you for watching and i will see you soon continuing the coverage of this incredible event uh, until it ends uh, so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your weekend